a student of mine sent this great problem and I wanted to share it with you because I find it challenging to set up, challenging to discuss with a visual model, and really rewarding in the end when we come to the answer. And the problem tells us that, well, let's go over the problem, it tells us that a sphere with a radius of 1 is inscribed perfectly tightly into a cube, that this cube is then inscribed in a sphere so that each vertex of the cube touches this larger sphere. What is the length of the diameter of the bigger sphere? So essentially we have a sphere inside a cube inside a sphere. And they're all inscribed in each other, which basically means they fit perfectly. And it says it here perfectly tightly. Uh, we don't even need to say that. If the shape is inscribed, then it is fitting perfectly tightly. I'm actually going to break this picture up into two sequences because I'm having a difficult time setting it up. First, let me draw the cube. And inside the cube, I'm going to draw the sphere. So this is my rough sketch of a cube. Although I should definitely just be copying and pasting this image from online. I don't know why I'm trying to draw it, but I'll, I'll try anyway. Because if you had a problem like this, you'd probably have to draw it freehand as well. So let's try to get a sense of that together. Again, a cube, every face of the cube is a square. So I'm trying to set this up so it looks like every part of this cube is the same. Don't want to create a rectangular prism. That's my, my sketch right there. And I'm also going to give it um, uh, transparency so we can see right through it. That's our cube. And I'm actually going to make two copies of this. If I make a mistake, we have a backup cube. Anyway, so inside this cube is what? Well, there's a sphere inside of it. And it fits perfectly tightly. So, try that one more time. Maybe something like this. All right, that's just a sphere, and there's going to be an issue here sketching this out because we're trying to represent a 3D model with a 2D shape. So we, we I'm going to struggle here drawing this because it's difficult to get to look right. But I know that this the sphere on the inside has a diameter and it has a radius. And they tell us the radius. They say, well, the radius of that sphere is 1. So it means that this distance right here is 1, 1 something. Radius of 1. And therefore, if that's the radius, well, the diameter, right, it's going to be the same anywhere in the sphere. So this, this height right here, this diameter, is 2. And that tells us a lot about the cube because it's, it's fitting inside the cube, which means that this line is the same thing as this line right here. They match, right? It fits in the cube. And this line, line this height, is the same as this edge in the cube and every edge on the cube. So that tells us that the cube has an edge of 2. And that takes us to the next step. So we've, we've got that. Where we, I think we've extracted everything we need from that part of the problem. Because here's our cube again. And around that cube is, in fact, another sphere. So here the sphere fits around the cube so that, so that every vertice of the cube is going to hit the sphere. And... It might not look like that in this image because here's a vertice, here's one, and so forth, right? But the way this 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 cube is sitting in here, what I'm trying to convey is that if we go from one vertice all the way across to the other, that's like the diameter of the sphere. And these all do it, um, but maybe my image doesn't really show that. It's just difficult to see with a th a th this 3D picture in this 2D model. So So our goal... In this, in this problem is to find the distance from one of these edges to the other. Now this line that I'm drawing here goes through the middle of the cube. It's not on one of the faces. And that's going to that's gonna take us a couple of steps to get to it. Because we know that this distance right here is 2. And so is this, right? Remember on a cube, every edge is the same. So this distance right here, right? That's on the face, the right face of this cube over here. It's not going through the middle. And what we know is, well, that's, that's a right triangle, right? Because we have a cube here, two legs of two, mystery side, that's the hypotenuse. So let's use the Pythagorean theorem to solve this, right? A squared plus B squared is C squared. So we square both legs. Four and four is eight. So C squared is eight, but we want to know how long is this, so it's the square root 
of 8. I'm going to leave it as that for now. We'll reduce later. And this can actually, you know, this can help us figure out what this, this long distance is here going through the center. If you can try and imagine what's happening here, this, this like pinkish or orangish line right here that's going across, and this line that, w that we just drew are certainly, certainly connected. Now that we have the square root of 8 here, we might also want to draw that down here to see a new triangle that's now forming. I'm going to change colors here because this is getting too cluttered. So this um, distance right here is going to be the same as the other square root of 8. Right? It's just on a, another diagonal on another face of the cube. If we draw this up here and come back down through the center of the cube, we have a new right triangle. And that's exciting because we know what? We know that this distance right here is 2. This distance right here is the square root of 8. So it's just another diagonal on another face of the cube. And we can use it to figure this mystery side right here. And I'm going to draw that triangle outside and solve it there. So here's our right triangle. We know this is 2. This is the square root of 8. What's the mystery side? What's the diameter of our larger sphere? Well, again, the Pythagorean theorem tells us to square both legs. And that will tell us what c squared is, or the hypotenuse squared. And 2 squared is 4. Square root of 8 squared is 8. Remember that. And that means that c squared is, is equal to 12 and c is equal to the square root of 12. And that is the diameter of our larger sphere. So again, all we, all we did was we, we used the cube, the diagonals here on the faces. Right, let me, let me get this correct here. Right, this, di this triangle right here gave us this diagonal. And then we said, oh, it's the same thing as this diagonal down here in the bottom face, which is following directly up below this long diameter of the sphere that's cutting across from one opposite vertice to another. So we, we were able to construct a few right triangles to figure out the diameter of this larger sphere. And if you wanted to uh, reduce the square root of 12 or write it in a, a simplified way, we could say, oh, that's the same thing as the square root of 4 times 3. That's 12. Take the square root of 4 and get 2, and then leave the square root of 3 in the radical sign. And that's our answer. Alright, hope you enjoyed.